asked me a question that I, I think is important to address, um, which is that um, some, some uh, <clears throat> acupuncturists feel that needling the back shoe points could be bad for somebody and could be draining for them. Um, and actually, some acupuncturists will never ever needle any of the back shoe points because they feel like it could be a sort of life threatening, you know, very dangerous thing to do. And, um, you know, what I've noticed, because I do needle back shoe points quite a bit, what I've noticed over the years is that um, if, if the treatment of the back is too intense, the person can be quite fatigued afterwards. But the thing about that you have to bear in mind is that the, the patient is face down. And if you're face down and a lot of energy is getting moved, when you get up from the treatment table, you're likely to be dizzy. In fact, it's a very common side effect of back treatments um, with the patient face down that, and with moving a lot of chi, that they're going to get up and feel really out of it. So that's just something to factor in. Um, what I normally do is give my patients uh, some water with some remedies in to ground them. Um, I do give that to a lot of patients after acupuncture anyway, but I think it's especially useful when somebody's face down. And to warn the patient, you know, there's a, there's a, a, that you're quite likely to feel kind of dizzy and spacey and to get up real carefully. Um, if somebody has a fainting tendency and you do a, a, a back treatment and they're face down for a while, Make sure that they're aware to get up slowly if they have orthostatic hypertension or anything like that, you know, so that um, they, they don't pass out. Um, and a back treatment that's, that's just too intense will drain somebody's energy. You know, they'll feel drained by it. And that's something to pay attention to, I think. Um, however, I do not believe that needling the back shoe points is intrinsically a bad or dangerous thing to do. And I'm... What um, remedies do you put in the water? Oh, um, well, I have a whole set of, of remedies. It's a, it's, it's, um, a flower remedy, should we? Yeah, and, and vibrational elixirs uh -huh. and things. Uh -huh. I've got a little vibrational homeopathic pharmacy behind, mm. behind that door. So, um, and then I have this stocked <laughs> remedy bottle, and I think that there's, there's a bunch of spiritual remedies in it, um, and some vibrational remedies, and uh, I've probably got... Uh, FES Yarrow formula and a little rescue remedy is always very useful to get people back in their body. Um, I like meteorite. Um, that actually will bring people back into their feet. <laughs> kind of makes sense. Um, so I mean, there's definitely things you can you can add in to water. Also, minerals are really good. You can um, you, you can buy those. Um, what's it called? Cell power and. Cell tech and those other kind of mineral, just a few drops, not too much, um, in water. Very grounding because the mineralization of the water is good. And I always make sure that the water at, at my home and here in the clinic is magnetized uh, because magnet, magnetized water is useful and, of course, filtered, really good filtered water so it tastes and, and is clean. I think it's very important. Um, yeah. So. I just want to go back to the, the, the safety of back shoe point treatments and the idea that somehow they can be very dangerous. Um, I, I mean, okay, so in summary, um, I think that they're, they're useful. I don't see them as necessarily a dangerous practice at all. Um, but I do think you've got to be conscious about what you're doing. Like if you're working with a deficient, tired, weak patient, um, then... Um, you know, the, the back shoe points can be, can be rather intense. I do like the Japanese method of just going subcutaneously a little bit and following the channel with a really smooth needle. The difference between working with like a silicon coated um, 0.18 millimeter, that would be like a 38 gauge or a Japanese number two gauge. The difference between that kind of needle and a needle from, you know, 1200, in China, you know, this big, thick <laughs> metal thing that you might want to start knitting with or something is so, I mean, it's such a big difference that, that you know, I'm sure if we were using heavy, thick needles, you could really mess people up 
on the back shoe point. <laughs> you can mess people up on the back shoe point. But, but with modern needles and gentle techniques, I think it's really fine to work on the back shoe point system. So I just wanted to address a little bit, because especially in this area, there's some practitioners who you know are very influential and who, who really um, are adamantly opposed to the use of back shoe points. And, um, so I, uh, oftentimes acupuncture students have come to me and, and sort of expressed this idea or expressed horror at the idea that I'm teaching a, a class on the back shoe points because why would I want to teach one person, you know, sort of expressing, why would I want to teach these techniques that are said in the Neijing to be, you know, super dangerous? And, um, you know, if somebody sees it, knows a passage in the Neijing that says the back shoe points are super dangerous, please show it to me. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I'm not aware of any passage like that. Um, there are passages in the Neijing that talk about uh, when to use the back shoe points very specifically, and that's the, as I quoted to you, that chapter 55 of the Su Wen, you know, when the pernicious energy is approaching the Zhang organ. That's when you, you, you know, it's especially good to use the back shoe points. So if, if we think about the back shoe point system as ruled by the bladder, because it's on the bladder channel, and the bladder is responsible for the transformations of qi. And it's this gateway that moves the intelligent information about the functioning of your, and the intelligence of your organ systems, and how the organ systems interrelate with each other, how they uh, interact with each other. If the back shoe point system is mediating that intelligence into your body, then obviously it's a good system to work with. And obviously, like any other system in your body, you could mess it up if you tried hard enough. Don't try so hard. <laughs> Be gentle. Um, that's my thoughts about that. Does anybody have any questions or any comments um, about anything that we've covered in the last two days? How do you magnetize your water? Oh, I use standing magnets. Um, you know, big, simple, cheap, standing magnets. Um, I, you can get really, really strong standing magnets from Peter Ragnar, RoaringLionPublishing.com. Peter Ragnar is one of my, my heroes, actually. Um, they're really, really strong, those magnets. And um, you're setting, setting... So then you have a crock pot of water. Yeah. You put it right on the North Pole negative face of the magnet. So you've got a, a typical standing magnet with a not a fused polarity, mm -hmm. like a Buckeye magnet, <coughs> but, a, but a regular regular magnet that has a north face and a south face. Mm -hmm. And you can figure out which is the north pole of the magnet by taking a compass. And the, the north pole of the magnet will repel the north needle of a compass, mm. because north and north repel each other. I think that's how it works. So you figure out, and oftentimes when you buy standing magnets, they're clearly marked. Normally the north face is you know, in blue or green or black, mm -hmm. and the south face is, is in red. Yeah. And so you, you, you can buy these nice cheap standing magnets, um, relatively cheap. And the nice thing about magnet therapy is that, you know, maybe you spend, you know, 30 or 40 or 50 dollars on a magnet, but it will last longer than you do. Mm. It'll still mm. be good for your grandchildren, probably. Um, and a lot of medical research in Russia and Japan and different places, especially in back in the 1950s, 1940s, India too, 1960s, um, they had practitioners treating thousands of patients with magnetized water. South Pole magnetized, North Pole magnetized, and um, different types of magnets. And I studied magnetic healing with a man called the Reverend Dr. Jesse Partridge, <laughs> who um, was this really eccentric and fun uh, magnet therapist who used to come through town you know, in the sort of magnet caravan of teaching. And, um, and he worked mainly in Mexico in the cancer clinics using really strong magnets right on the body, you know, and getting very interesting results sometimes. Um, How long do you leave the water on? Oh, forever. Oh, it just sits, that's yeah. where the crock sits. Yeah. Okay, but, but, I get it. But the consensus amongst all magnet therapists is that North Pole magnetism is best for standing water. Right? North Pole mag magnetism. Okay. Yeah. Um, not so for the body necessarily at all, but for water. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay, any other questions about anything? Yes.